Another FRC season is upon us, meaning I'll be here to recap a lot of these events. But despite doing this for six years now, <sighs> I don't really talk about FRC outside of those recap vids. Granted, I make these videos for people who know what's going on in FRC, but that doesn't really help everyone else who isn't in this program. I also realize that there are plenty of people who are on a first team who still have no idea what is going on. What are these different events? What do the numbers mean? And why do I end the videos with this picture and this tagline? So here's a quick rundown of the who's and what's of first. From someone who competed in first, but is not currently employed by or associated with first. Yet. Call me. So first things first. First is an acronym. It stands for, for the Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Rolls right off the tongue. It was started up by inventor Dean Kamen, who made things like portable dialysis machines, but is mainly known for the Segway. I thought the guy who invented the Segway died after driving his Segway off a cliff. No, no, no. That was the CEO of Segway, Jimmy Hesselden, who... that... Uh, that did actually happen, yeah. First also has a co-founder, the late great Woody Flowers. Yep, that's his name, who was an MIT professor. These two uber nerds wanted to make a sports league for the mind. Instead of humans doing the sports ball, humans would build robots to do the sports ball. Now I know what you're thinking. Is this like BattleBots? And if you're on an FRC team, you're gonna hear this a lot from your parents, from your teachers, is not BattleBots, okay? BattleBots, you're building robots to destroy each other. And I liked BattleBots as a kid. Everyone liked BattleBots as a kid. But when you built robots, like, man, that's $5,000 of tech that just exploded. These are robots coming together to do sports balling together and not make each other explode. Although explosions do happen. Unlike other sports leagues, FIRST changes its game year to year. Not slight changes, we're talking completely revamping the tasks for these robots. So the current game will be unlike any of the previous year's games since the first FIRST competition all the way back in 1992. Each year on the first Saturday of January, a new game is revealed and teams have six-ish weeks to build a robot to carry out the challenge. During a match, the first part sees the robots running purely autonomously with no human controls. Then the human drivers take control for the rest of the match. The last portion marks the end game, where robots either hang or balance or hang and balance depending on the game. Also worth noting that there are different levels to FIRST. FRC, FIRST Robotics Competition, is the big robots. FTC, the FIRST Tech Challenge, are smaller robots on a smaller playing field. And FLL, the FIRST LEGO League, where teams actually build robots out of LEGOs. And yes, those challenges change year to year as well. I only focus on FRC for my recaps, though much love to the other levels. Since FRC is the first and oldest level of first, some people who have been around a while, I mean old people, might use first and FRC interchangeably. Teams have a team name and a number. They get a number based on when they started up. This didn't start until a few years into competition, so team number one actually isn't the first, first team. The bigger the number, the newer the team. Take, for example, five-time world champion the Cheesy Poofs. 254, three digits. It's kind of old. Compare that with rookie team 10,695. Sheesh. <laughs> We're in a five digits now. If you remember when first only had three digit teams, remember to take your back meds. 
See, whereas North American sports typically has 30 or 32 teams depending on the league, FRC is a league that consists of 3,200 teams worldwide. That's a lot of teams to keep track of. So the main source I use to keep track of everything is a site called The Blue Alliance. It has a catalog of teams, events, and stats. It also serves as an archive, which I kind of like just pop in, see what matches were like a decade ago. And I hate that a decade ago is 2015 and not 2005. I also use FRC Map to see the distribution of teams and what events they go to. Events tend to have anywhere from 30 to 60 teams and are free for the public. You can watch matches and see where teams work on their robot between matches. Adhere to etiquette, which basically boils down to be safe and be respectful. For what teams should expect, especially the 300 or so rookie teams competing this year, first actually put out a video on that topic, a sort of what to expect when you're expecting to compete at an FRC event. Would you believe me if I told you that I only made this video so I can show you all this graphic? Let's just, let's just admire it a bit more, okay? I worked really hard on it. You've probably noticed that these matches are three on three. Each team submits one robot and matches are played between alliances of three different teams. Qualification matches have random alliances, so your partner in one match might be your opponent in another, which is why it's important to do film study. Like actually film study, like any other sports has film study, FRC teams have members in the stands watching every match and seeing which robots are hot. Because after qualification matches, we go into playoffs. Playoffs? Where the top eight teams choose who they want in a snake draft. That's like what fantasy football uses. There are some other things that make it a bit more complicated, but we keep it simple for this video. Playoffs, playoffs used to be a standard bracket format, like what March Madness uses. But now it's a double elimination bracket, like what most gaming tournaments use. There are also two different event formats. We have the regional model and the district model. The regional model is pretty straightforward. Win the regional or win a cultural award, and you go right on to the world championship. At a district, if you win a district, win a cultural award, then you move on to the district championship, where if you win that, or win a cultural award at that, then you advance to worlds. There are also some other ways teams from districts can advance, but keeping it simple. Teams from districts can compete in regionals, though winning the above awards creates a wildcard spot. This is to ensure that only so many teams can go to worlds, because again, 3,000 teams. So why might some places be on a regional model and some be on the district model? Well, let's compare Oklahoma and Michigan. Oklahoma is on a regional model, which makes sense because they only have 40 teams in their state. Compare that with Michigan on the district model that has 600 teams. Despite being a league in which teams build robots and compete in matches with those robots, the biggest award goes beyond the sports element. Woody Flowers coined the term gracious professionalism. Some might call it sportsmanship, but this is behavior that extends well beyond the field of play. The biggest award in first is the first impact award, which goes to the team who had the biggest impact in terms of service to their community. Literally not about the bots. The award used to be called the Chairman's Award, but they changed the name recently to get rid of the gender binary term man. And every time I hear the word chairman, I just think of Mao Zedong. Great, now I have a picture of Mao Zedong on my computer. Of course, I also have the uh, 
pregnant dozer on my computer. Let's just look at that one more time. It, it's a beautiful picture. Worlds used to just be one field played to a winner. Uh, yes, that is the Epcot Center at Disney World. But as the league expanded, so did Worlds. It went to four fields with the winners of each playing each other until a winner. Then it expanded to eight fields. Then it expanded to 12 fields split into two separate world championships. All before COVID made them downsize back to one championship with eight fields. Now it's worth noting that the championship isn't the FRC World Championship. It is the first world championship, meaning it is the grand finale for all the levels of first. So that's that. And by that, I mean a very rough introduction to first. I definitely didn't talk about a lot of the everything else. I'm sure people smarter than I can drop knowledge into the comments section. Here's a couple other people you might see in FRC videos throughout the season, or if you're lucky, at events. This is Chris Moore. He is the current CEO of First, and this is Blair. He's the lead MC. So if you hear me say, if Blair's there, the hype's there, that's Blair. I wanted to make this as a heads up that I will be diving face first into two months of robotics videos and basically I want people to watch my videos and know what the hell is going on. So now that you know what's going on for the videos, you can like and subscribe so you can watch the recaps. I will see you after week one. And remember, gracious in victory, professional in defeat. Amen. At some point, we must face the fact that anti-science is pro-stupid. Thank you.